Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Boeing to build U.S. Navy's first operational carrier based unmanned aircraft. Ford inspection drones keep engine plant workers safely grounded. And Uber Eats eyes drone delivery of food. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. The U.S. Navy has awarded Boeing an $805 million contract to build the Navy's first operational carrier base unmanned aircraft, the MQ-25 Aerial Refueler. Boeing, which was awarded the Engineering and Manufacturing Development contract to provide four aircraft, will conduct its work on the MQ-25A Stingray in St. Louis, Missouri. As a company, we made an investment in both our team and in an unmanned aircraft system that meets the U.S. Navy's refueling requirements, says Leanne Carrot, President and CEO of Boeing Defense Space Security. The fact that we're already preparing for first flight is thanks to an outstanding team who understands the Navy and their need to have this important asset on carrier decks around the world. Designed to provide the Navy with a much-needed refueling capability, the MQ-25 Stingray will extend the range of deployed Boeing FA-18 Super Hornet, Boeing EA-18G Growler, and Lockheed Martin F-35C aircraft thus allowing for better use of combat strike fighters. Additionally, MQ-25 will also seamlessly integrate with a carrier's catapult and launch and recovery system. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. On the eve of the two-year anniversary of the FAA establishing regulations for operating small UAS, also known as drones, AUVSI released an update to its analysis of waivers by the FAA for UAS operations beyond the scope of the small UAS rule and found that nearly 2,000 have been granted. The analysis finds that nearly 92% of the waivers grant permission to operate UAS at night which is not permitted under the FAA rule. The drone community got another black eye when a drone violated the TFR around the Terwilliger Fire in Blue River, Oregon, grounding firefighting aircraft working on the blaze. The drone was first spotted by a helicopter at around 6.38 p.m. local time. Fire manager grounded all aircraft out of concern for safety. The intrusion happened late in the day, with two hours remaining for aerial firefighters to work before stopping for the night. Reportedly, those last two hours can be when firefighters can see some of the most active areas of the fire. A new drone, which is currently the subject of a Kickstarter fundraising campaign, has the unusual ability to land on the water and briefly submerge, capturing underwater video before surfacing and returning to the air. The Spry Drone, which is a collaboration of Urban Drones, the maker of the waterproof splash drone in Swell Pro. It is based on a racing drone design and can fly at speeds of up to 43 miles per hour, according to the company. The Nevada Institute for Autonomous Systems announced they have signed a letter of intent with the European Union's largest Polish coking producing company, JSWSA. The UAS commercial drone industry in Poland is currently booming, similar to the one being seen in the United States. One of the leading entities in this commercial autonomous systems market is JSWSA, a company that makes the core ingredient for steel with a $2.5 billion market capitalization. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Ford employees are now using cameras mounted on drones to safely and efficiently inspect high-rise gantries, pipework, and roof areas at the company's Dagenham engine plant in the UK. Previously, the team carried out this important maintenance work by using automated extendable platforms and scaffolding to check 40-meter-long gantries that support the plant's heavy machinery. 
Each inspection area would take a laborious 12 hours to complete. Now with feet firmly on the ground and controlling drones equipped with GoPro cameras, maintenance staff can thoroughly inspect each area in just 12 minutes. The whole production facility can be covered in a day, zoning in on hard to reach areas to ensure they are well maintained and comply to rigorous safety standards. We joke about having a robot do the work when there is a light bulb moment, use drones instead, said Pat Manning, machining manager at Ford Dagenham Engine Plant. With the time saved, the team at Dagenham can carry out more frequent inspections without having to shut facilities to construct the scaffolding that was once necessary. Forest drones are also set to work inspecting pipework, locating air leaks, and checking machinery. The company is now evaluating the possibility of using this high-flying technology in other regions. Uber has unveiled a vision for expanding its Uber Eats delivery service. To include drones using some of the same infrastructure, it plans to build for its flying taxi service. The company made the announcement at the third annual Uber Elevate conference, being held in Tokyo. During a presentation at the conference, Uber said food delivery by drone is a natural extension of Uber Air. Uber envisions using the same skyports that will serve as bases for Uber Air for food delivery services. The ground-based Uber Eats appears to be popular. According to Uber, the food delivery service has grown to $6 billion in bookings in 293 cities around the world. In some places, Uber Eats is available, whereas ride-hailing service is not. While it's likely going to be years before a drone is delivering your burgers and fries, Uber is already talking with the FAA about Uber Air, and the drone delivery project is expected to now be a part of those discussions. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes, covering the entire aviation and aerospace world, are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.